All right, this is part three of section 4.4. .4. So we know what an inflection point is, we know how to find them, um, and we know what they do and what they signify. Uh, so now we're gonna talk about the second derivative test. So the test actually does the exact same thing as the first derivative test, and that both of them determine relative extrema which is weird because the second derivative in the section, we've been using it to find concavity and inflection points, but that's not what the test is actually for. The test is still trying to find relative extrema. And I remember when I was in calculus, I kept getting those uh, mixed up all the time. I always thought the second derivative test was for concavity, uh, and it's really not. It's still talking about the relative extrema. Okay, so let's see what it says. So the function, uh, let f be a function such that the first derivative at c is zero, which means c is a critical number, and the second derivative of f exists on an open interval containing that c. So if the second derivative with c, that c plugged into it, if it comes out as a negative, then f has a relative max at c, f of c. And it should kind of make sense because if the second derivative is negative, that means your graph is pretty much concave down, which means you've got a relative max sitting up at the top. So second case, if the second derivative is positive, then f has a relative min at that same, or at C, F of C at that point. And again, it's because if it's positive, that means the graph is concave up and you've got a minimum sitting right down there, right at the bottom. So now there's a third case, and that's when it comes out as zero. So you plug that critical number into the second derivative and it came out as zero. Then the test, fails. So it does not tell you anything. It doesn't tell you if it's relative max or relative min. So if it fails, you're going to use the first derivative test. Like, don't give them and go, well, don't know anything. I'm like, yeah, you do, because remember, there's two tests, and so if, the, if one of them fails, then you got to go kind of default to the other one. All right, so let's give this a shot. Okay, so we'll do the first one. Uh, so find the relative extrema using the second derivative test, meaning that's how we have to do it. So we gotta find your critical numbers. So that means you're gonna get the first derivative, so 3x squared minus 6x and we're gonna set that equal to zero and start solving for x. So you can factor out a three x. So x would equal zero and a positive two. So these are what we're gonna test. But we're gonna test them in the second derivative. So the second derivative, six x minus six, so we're gonna plug in these numbers one at a time. So when x is zero, it comes out as <clears throat> negative six. So that's the negative. So that means that you've got a relative max. Okay, so let's plug in the next one, so the two plug them into the second derivative and it comes out as a positive 12. So greater than zero. So that means you've got a relative min. So it is a little bit counterintuitive, uh, or at least for my brain, if, I, if it comes out as a negative, I wanna associate that with a, a minimum instead of a maximum. So you gotta make sure that you're getting it straight. All right, so we've got a relative max 
uh, at the point uh, when x is 0. So I'll go back to your original function. So when x is 0, the y value is 3. And then for your relative min, uh, when x is 2, you can plug that in there. And if you plug the 2 in, we're going to get negative 1 as an answer for y. Okay, so that's how the second derivative test works. So the next video we will conclude uh, by looking at the graph of a derivative and seeing exactly what that tells us.